Right. Dick Stratton talked with head coach Joe Canan earlier on. Coach Joe, many people in your area are calling this the best manatee time, uh, team they've ever seen. Well, our kids have played awfully well so far this year, and we just hope we can have another good game left in us. Share your thoughts with me, uh, probably the biggest night in your coaching. Well, it's filled with excitement. You know, the, I think a lot of the pressure, though, is off. The pressure was in staying alive and getting to the final game. Now we're here in the final game. Now, the you know, we got to go out and play on the field. Well, you are a power team. It has been raining. It could rain throughout the night. Uh, would that favor your football team? I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference. Uh, the field is in pretty good shape, and even if it does rain, it's, it's not only it's going to detract from either team. They, you have a heavy team, but they say when they're playing for a championship, 180 pound is like 210. Do you agree with that? I don't know. That's hard to say. I want to wish you a lot of luck and congratulate you and your chosen profession of going back to your hometown in Bradenton and doing so much for young people. Well, thank you, Dick. I appreciate that. As you can see, these two teams will be playing before a capacity crowd. There's not going to be an empty seat anywhere in this ball stadium tonight. Manatee is led by Tracy Sanders, quarterback Tracy Sanders, on a run pass threat also. Now, Southridge wants to try and make this young man pitch the football on the option. They don't want him running it. Well, let me also bring out one thing while you talk about all his running. On the air, he had 10 touchdown passes, and he's also scored 12 times himself in regular season play, and then there were three playoff games. So they've got three threats back there. When he rolls out, why, he can be the great threat you talk about running, but Dave, he also is not a bad passer. They will try and double him up as much as they can. Tracy Waiters, the fullback, he's the man that will be running the dive play also. They will try and break him open off center. He has had some incredible runs this season. Let's go back to Army Navy a few years ago when they had Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside, Doc Blanchard and Glenn Davis. This Manatee team has the same thing, and Tracy is uh, Doc Blanchard. He's had uh, 16 regular season touchdowns, and he has great statistics, but he has the power and speed. He's the middleman. In the backfield, also at the tailback, Frank Creighton. He is the guy that will burn you from the outside. He's the man that's rushed for 1,100 yards this season already. The small scat back to complement the big fullback. Yeah, with so many stations joining us around America watching the best in high school, they, they remember Glenn Davis. Everybody does. He was Mr. Outside. Frank Creighton, 1,016 yards in the regular season. He'll be number 22, and he has scored 16 touchdowns, and Manatee has scored 489 points, and like... Southridge, they've been pretty stingy, giving up only 123. All right, this is going to be a big football game. The quick speed of Southridge against the big, meaty guys at Manatee. Southridge will try and run wide on Manatee. Manatee will try and push them off the line and try to make a power football game out of this one. Manatee is a slight favorite, but Southridge is playing at home. It ought to be a Jim Dandy. Kickoff is coming up. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Miami, Florida, Tamiami Stadium, the State High School 4A Championship. I'm Dave Reed, along with Dick Stratton. As we get ready to kick this one off, this is really what high school football is all about. It's a culmination of a great season for both of these two football clubs. Early on in the season, this is how these two teams got here in the playoffs. They both won three playoff games. Bradenton Manatee got here by beating Chamberlain 27-20, Lakeland 19-14, and Buholtz 28-12, as you see it on the graphic. Southridge beat Winter Park 21 to 7. They beat Northern, Northwestern 21 14, and North Miami 41 to 25. So you can see both of these clubs have dominated playoff competition. 
Manatee will be booting the football off the South Ridge. Andy Elton is your kicker, the young man you see there, back deep to receive. For South Ridge, Frank Creighton and Tracy Sanders. And Dave, if it means anything, they've only played one time last year in a Kiwanis Holiday Bowl over in Manatee. Both had nine one seasons, and Manatee lost to uh, South Ridge 23 to 20 in overtime with a field goal. We are underway. Taken by one of the up men for South Ridge. And South Ridge will take it over first and 10 at the 27 yard line. Return on the play by Lee Smith, a backup wide receiver. So we'll see South Ridge on offense for the first time, a very explosive offense. Here's the way they look Leon Brown, your quarterback. Reed, we talked about him. Hunter, Montgomery, and Curtis Chappelle. He's the big threat, the wide receiver. We'll check the line after the play. First down 10, 27 yard line. South Ridge. Leon Brown, your quarterback, the I formation. This is what we thought would happen. The big fullback up the middle, Rodney Hunter. Hunter, who's rushed for over 350 yards this season already, gets about four on the play, gets it down to the 29 yard line. And there is a lot of difference in that line weight between the two teams. There's your front line Green, Koshua, Wilson, Raddy, Kloss, and Hawkins. Victor Hawkins, the tight end, he's the man they'll go through in the short passing situation. Gain of four on the play. Second down, six, South Ridge. Chappelle comes out as a wide receiver to the near side. Hawkins is your tight end. Southridge shows motion. Pitch out goes to the tailback. Reed. Reed breaks it to the right side. And Reed gets it down to the 37-yard line. Very close to first down yardage. Over on the stop for Manatee. Willie Tatum, the outstanding cornerback. And it looks like exactly what their coach Salinger said to us, Dave, in yesterday's meeting, that they were going to test it wide, and they've done that on the second play. This ball club has rushed for 2,600 yards this season. They've passed for 1,429 for a total of 4,062, as you see the first down indication being given. 373 points while limiting their opponents to just 128. They have dominated both defensively and offensively. A good, solid ball club. Southridge, of course, is coached by Don Solinger. His offensive coordinator is Herb Corris. Offensive line coach, Steve Cerrotti. Wide receiver, T.D. Johnson and Steve Alvers. Defensive coordinator, Jerry Hughes. Lynn Walkenskowski is the strength coach. Mike Shapiro coaches the defensive line. Dale Hardy coaches the secondary. First down and 10, Miami Southridge, their own 37-yard line. Give us up the middle to Hunter. Hunter breaks across the 40 before being dragged down by Scott Schubert, the 6'3", 200-pound strong side linebacker. There's Don Solinger, seven years, or check a joke, Canan, we should say. He was a former offensive coordinator at Eastern Kentucky the year they won the Division I AA championship. And I wonder if that'll have anything to do tonight with their offense continuing. It's been very explosive. Uh, his game is offense. Second down, seven for Southridge. Chappelle comes out to the near side. This time they have a slot back. That should be Montgomery. Tony McLean going in motion. Again, the fake to the fullback. They get to the fullback. Big hole across the front. Down to the 46 and to the 47-yard line, Rodney Hunter. And Hunter is down close and does have a first down. Big hole that time opened off between the left guard, Charles Raddy, and Andy Wilson, number 55, the center. This is a small offensive line for Southridge. They only average about 190 pounds, and they're giving away a lot of beef to Manatee. So far, the holes have been there. Manatee in the 4-3 on first and 10. Here comes the pitch, the quick pitch. To the tailback, Harvey Reed, and Reed gets it down to the 49. Gain of about a yard, and Schubert knocks him down one more time from Manatee. We might have seen a little bit of a slipperage there. We've had rain yesterday here in Miami. We've had rain today, rain up till about an hour ago. But I would say overall, and thanks to the conditions of the ground crew here, this field's in pretty good condition for running. Don Solinger, seven years at South Ridge, played at Southwest High School here in Miami way back in 1962. Had a lot of positive press this season for the young coach. Outstanding young man as of the entire coaching staff of both of these schools. Second down and nine for Southridge. Here comes the fake. We'll see Brown throw for the first time this evening. Has his man, Tony McLean. And McLean is out to the 35-yard line of Manatee. A little down and out pattern, Nick Stratton. Yes, and I'll tell you, it's done very well. And it's uh, so deceptive when you're primarily a running team and you have an arm like that, too. And I thought tonight that Don might put more passing into than I thought because the Manatee is bigger. Let's take a look at it again. Pretty good statistics. The fake into the line was very well done. And look at the young fellow firing. 
and a good catch, good balance, and uh, it's a big first down, and Southridge is now down into Manatee territory. This drive started back on the 27-yard line of Southridge. They've been impressive. Fake is up the gut to Hunter, pitches off to Reed. Reed's got one man to get around and breaks it. Reed all the way down to the 20-yard line. Tim Russo on the tackle for Manatee, but not until Reed gets the first down and Southridge knocking on the door. We talked about the option play. Here it is, executed at its best, Dick Stratton. Yes, and uh, exceptional speed. Uh, Bobby Reed has 15 touchdowns over 1,000 yards. He's in that wonderful club of 1,000 yards, and you can see it there. But it was well executed. A drive starting at the 26, they're now at the 20. Flanker to the right side. McLean split out wide. Brown fakes to Reed, looking for a man in the end zone. Fires short instead, has it. And all the way down to the four-yard line, Anthony Montgomery, the slot back. Anthony Montgomery collects his sixth catch of the season. He had five coming in the ball game for a touchdown. And uh, one of the things we'll watch as we look at it again, of course, he's a right-hand thrower, but look, look at his talent to go to the opposite way and the accuracy of his throwing. This team is really on the move. They sent Hawkins deep into the end zone, cleared the zone out underneath, First down and goal, Southridge. Give us off to Reed, the tailback, which is a few people, touchdown, Southridge. Let's take a look at it again, and let's watch the blocking on the right side. Yes, he's a good runner, power, but look at the running power and uh, look at the blocking to get in for the first touchdown in this championship of the state of Florida. Sang Kim on to try the PAT. Snap spot kick is up and right to the uprights and good. 8.04 to go in the first quarter and Southridge takes the opening kickoff. They lead 7-0. A 63-yard drive, Dick Stratton, on the first possession in this high school football game. We're going to have a good one. Stay with us. We'll be coming back. Frank Creighton is back deep to receive from Manatee. Sang Kim will be booting it away. 8.04 to go in first quarter. Nine plays, 84 yards, four minutes and 56 seconds to score the first one. Let's see what Manatee does. They're Good kick by Kim. It will go out of bounds at the five-yard line. And this is a rule in high school football that is different from college and pro. It will be a first down and 10 at the 40-yard line. They do not come back and kick it over again after a five-yard penalty. The team receiving gets the football at the 40-yard line, so Manatee will start first and 10 from right there. As you see the graphic on the drive, very impressive first-half drive, 4.56 time of possession, and that is exactly what Don Solomon wanted to do, keep the offense on the field and keep Manatee's offense off. Manatee has the football this time. Tracy Sanders will start at your quarterback. Tracy Waiters, the big fullback. Frank Creighton in the backfield. First down, 10. Sanders, pitch out, Creighton, around the left side. Creighton has nine, ten, drags a couple of tacklers with him. And now you see the speed of the young man out there. The dive option, the fake to the fullback, the pitch to the tailback, and Creighton successful. Gets it down to midfield, and it is a first down for Manatee. We've only seen one play by Tracy Sanders, and uh, he is impressive, isn't he? Here's what the line looks like. This is a big bunch. Peebles at 235, Staroweski at 250. Odd at 185, Dunbar 220, Harry George 220, even the tight ends big with Frank Brunner at 215. First down and 10, Manatee, slot to the near side. Sanders gives to Waiters, big dive play. Waiters got a big hole. The Waiters down to the 32-yard line of Southridge before being dumped by the all-city cornerback Anthony Pope, but not before another first down. Look at it again, look at the power, but uh, take a look now at that offensive line that we've talked about so much. Look at that blocking. 
the blocking was tremendous. And then this big fella's got tremendous speed, number 34, Tracy Waiters, 16 regular season touchdowns, power and speed. He's a, one of the better college prospects. They ran to the right side off of Staroweski and Peebles. They will run that way about 60% of the time. First down, 10, Manatee. Give us off to Waiters. Boy, he's a big horse, isn't he? Daryl Day brings him down at the 21-yard line after a gain of five. And David, with that ball going out of bounds on the kickoff, of course, it gave them a splendid opportunity that put him where they'd like to be, well upfield. Had a, a deep kick, and they got it out to the 20, but they gave them real operating room to advance all the way up to their own 40 without an effort. Sanders, your quarterback, Creighton, your tailback. Uh, Waiters, your fullback. Stanley Collins, your flanker. Ronnie Mitchell is your wideout. When they throw, they will either throw to Mitchell or, or uh, Collins. It is a first down for Manatee. And across America, they're seeing two of our best. There are many great teams. We want to say our congratulations to Winter Park and also to Buholz. Eddie Field is a good friend. And, and he said, wow, watch this Manatee team. They are something to behold. And those teams only had one loss uh, on the entire season. So our congratulations to Winter Park and also to Buholz up in Gainesville, Florida, home of the University of Florida for their outstanding season. Ronnie Mitchell goes split to the wide side with Stanley Collins in the slot. First down, 10, Manatee. Give us to Waiters again. Waiters just runs over a couple of defenders and is finally dropped in the backfield by Marvin Jackson, the outstanding strong side linebacker. Raiders has rushed for over 700 yards this season, as you see there. Look at that average, 6.6 .6 and 16 touchdowns. Guess who's going to get the football when they get close to the goal line? <laughs> well, the way they've been running, they're close any time they get it. I believe we are going to see what we predicted, Dave. You football fans are going to see a great offensive show. Ronnie Mitchell goes out Brad Smith comes in with a play from coach Joe Kinnan fake to Waiters pitch to Creighton Creighton won't get it this time and Tony Marrero the free safety the hardest hitter on this Spartan football club the 5'9", 180 senior was not fooled on that one yes he forced the block to the outside forced the runner inside and it was a splendid the best defensive play of the night no gain on the play third down five with 553 to, to go here in the first quarter this Southridge team last year lost to Killian 10 to 7. That is the only loss they have had in three years of football. Here's the first pass. Collins, touchdown, Manatee. <laughs> Don't you hate defensive ball games? <laughs> I think it was a splendid, timely call. You know, we've been. We have been talking all day and yesterday about the running and the running and running. And I said to you, I think that both coaches will have confidence enough that their passing will come in. It was the timely call for the great running team to come up. And it was uh, Sanders' uh, 13th touchdown throw of the year. Andy Elton will kick off the Tracy Sanders hole. Stanley Collins gets his sixth touchdown of the season. Kick is up. And good. We have a tie football game. 5.38 to go here in the first quarter. And it has been an offensive show from Tamiami Stadium here in the great city of Miami. 7-7 tie score. Stanley Collins gets a 17th catch, and we will return. Stay with us. Touchdown play by Manatee. There's Tracy. He's thrown, that's his 11th touchdown on the season, to a great Collins receiver. And it is a touchdown and the extra point to tie it up. It's 7-7 here in Miami, Florida, in what promises to be a thriller. Andy Elton will boot it away for Manatee. Smith and Chappelle deep for Miami Suffrage. This is going to be an offensive show. Manatee held its opponents to 77 yards this season. That's 77 points total. That's not going to happen this ball game. Smith can't handle it. And the officials wave it, call it dead right there at the 17-yard line. Let's see. J.C. Williamson down discussing things. While we have the uh, a break, and you see J.C. Williamson indicating offsides against Southridge. J.C. Williamson, your referee. Kirby Smith, your umpire, as you look at Tracy Sanders on the near sideline. C.W. Clifton, your lineman. 
Chuck Alsabrook, the line judge, back judge James Anderson, clock operator is Gary Summers. That young man has had a heck of a season as you look at the drive, 308 on the possession, six plays, 60 yards. Unlike a ball going out of bounds in high school football, when the defensive team is offside, or the receiving team is offside, you do kick it over again, this time from five yards closer. Elton lays a foot into it. Smith takes it in his goal line. 15. And Smith still on his feet and now level back at his own 16-yard line. Scott Schubert on the stop for Manatee. So Southridge will have to start deep in its own territory in a lot worse field, field position than they had last time. Well, the last drive they started their 26 here at the 20, but I can see by that tackling that these young men know there's really no tomorrow. Actually, there is, but one is going to be crowned champion, and they've both worked hard enough to, to be the champions, and it's just a thrill to send this one around America for people to see what great high school football they play in this state. First and 10 for the Spartans. Montgomery comes to the near side as a slot back. Pitches off to Reed. And Reed is nailed. He gets to the line of scrimmage, and one, two, three, four, five white jerseys come over to level, and Paul Watkins was the man making the stop. Across the front, Watkins, Ackles, Van Yarn, Andrews, and Schubert, they average about 230 pounds apiece, folks. That's a big high school football team. Your linebackers, Todd Mooney and Stansberry. Corners, Tatum, Crossan, Wilson, and Alvoid Mays. The man to watch in the defensive backfield, Willie Tatum, we'll talk about him a little bit later on. Gain of two on the play. It'll be a second down and eight as McLean goes in motion. Fake to the fullback. Pitches off to Reed. Big hole on the right side. Reed drags a couple of tacklers and gets it down to the 30-yard line. First down, South Ridge. Tackle on the play by Alvoid Mays, the free safety on the far side. And now for the first time in this ball game, as you look at Reed coming out, that means Roman Nelson is coming in. Number 48, he's the number two man in the tailback slot. He's no slouch either. 622 yards on the season, a 7.8 average every time he touches a football. There's the young man right there. First and 10, Southridge. McLean comes to the near side. Brown pitch out. Nelson gets a block, tries to turn the corner and run out of bounds after five, and we're going to have a late hit. Tackle on the play by Schubert once again, but we're going to have a face mask, not a late hit, and we'll go against Manatee. Let's take a look at it. Uh, over anxious, perhaps. And when you reach your hand in there many times, you uh, are forced sometimes around the helmet. Probably unintentional, but it is a great rule for protection of injury. And another difference in high school football, if you have a flagrant penalty on a face mask in college, it's 15 yards. In high school, it's 15 yards, whether it's accidental or flagrant. So Southridge will move into Manatee territory at the Manatee 49-yard line. Chappelle comes to the near side. He's the deep threat. He averages 32 yards a catch. They send McLean in motion again to the far side. Now he lines up as a slot back. Manatee comes with a blitz. Here comes Reed. Big hole right side. Reed knocks the man down. And down to the 35-yard line. Boy, this kid is something else. When we take a look at this again, I want you to see the burst of speed, the hole that is open, but then I want you to see the collision here and the power running. Watch this. He just rolled over him, Dave, and continued. That is determination, and that is why better conditioning of a running back makes you have the power beside the speed to be better than average. Harvey Reed at 175 knocked down Paul Watkins at 220, and Van Yard at 225 had to drag him down. First down, fake to Nelson. Brown wants to throw. Sprint draw, got Nelson. Nelson down to the 18-yard line before Willie Wilson knocked him down. Roman Nelson had 10 receptions coming into this football game. Joe Canan, not very happy. We talked about running, but watch this. He's great from the rollout position. It was a nice fake. Now he has time and a good throw and a big first down. And remember, this drive started back at the 20. It certainly has been an offensive show to date. 
the sprint draw we talked about earlier on Dick Stratton. That's the only kind of pass they throw. They don't do any drop back stuff. Joe Canan calls the timeout as Don Sollinger will go out to talk to his team. Again, another high school rule. The coach can go out and talk to the team on the field during a timeout. You know, we talked about Coach Sollinger, but Coach Joe Canan over at the other side is something. He went back to Bradenton. He's had college experience. Offensive coordinator at Eastern Kentucky. He's assistant in Arkansas and Florida State, but just wanted to go home. His brother, by the way, over in Bradenton, Florida, which is just south of St. Petersburg and north of Sarasota. They've been playing football there for 63 years, and he wanted to go home and work with the young people. His brother's an outstanding coach at Manatee Junior College in basketball and say it's a family affair. His mother is on the board of directors in that state, so in the city uh, for the school board. So that is just a family affair and we are really enjoying ourselves here. Just quickly, you know what I thought was cute when we visited uh, Southridge yesterday? That a teacher from Bel Air Elementary School brought a whole lot of letters from a fourth grade Mrs. Lockwood's class in the fourth grade has wrote personal letters to these players in black there that you're magnificent, stupendous, uh, mammoth, and they had all the words uh, spelled right, Dave. <laughs> First down and 10, South Ridge. Give us off to Nelson. No, fake to Nelson. Give us off on the flanker reverse. And nobody fooled that time. Lee Smith gets it back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Schubert again on the stop for Manatee. Don Sollinger said they weren't going to throw too many gadget plays at him. They try and mess them up a little bit, like a flanker reverse there. That one, not successful. Did you notice when Manatee came out, as you look at uh, Southridge, you know, last season, these two teams played, as Dick Stratton mentioned, in the Kiwanis Bowl, but the Southridge has been here, what, four years ago? Yeah, and they lost to Merritt Island in a playoff in 1979, and Merritt Island went on to be the champions. Reed, big hole, fumbles the football, Manatee's going to get it. At the five-yard line. A disappointment, of course. It has been raining, but I don't believe that was caused by any witness. That was caused by, uh, let's see if anybody got a hand on it, or he just didn't have a hold of it. He's got plenty of room. No, he was hit, bumped, and now Manatee will have to start deep in their own territory for the first time. They got a break on the kickoff when they drove 60 yards from their own 40. Now they're just outside the five-yard line, and let's see how that explosive offense works. Willie Tatum recovered the football for Manatee. So the Hurricanes, first down and 10, their own five-yard line. They'll have to push it out. Give us off to the tailback, Creighton. Creighton gets about five, and that'll be it. And he's run out of bounds by Daryl Day and company. You look for a guy like Waiters in this kind of situation, the big fullback. They fake the Waiters and give off to Creighton. He gets about four on the play, so it moves it out a little bit. It'll be second down and seven, ball on the eight-yard line, with 2.12 to go in the first quarter. Frank Creighton runs the outside about as well as any running back in the state of Florida. During the playoffs, he's rushed for 402 yards, a 13.4 average of carry, 134 yards total throughout the playoffs. Sanders wants to throw, has a man but overthrows him. He was looking for Collins, and Collins could not get around Anthony Pope. We had been talking, and I just thought, that sometime in the game that they'd come up with that surprise play even though they've been dominating high school football over in the St. Pete, Manatee, and Sarasota area with a pass like that. And there it was. Manatee with their backs to the wall. And this is a football team that has so much bulk and you can see it there. They just dwarf the Southridge players. Third down seven. They need to push it out. They'll have to kick from deep in their own end zone if they can't do it. Got to be careful with it down here. Southridge in the 50. Sanders, pitch out. Creighton turns the corner, may have it. Gonna be very, very close. Creighton came very close to getting that first down, and it'll depend on exactly where they spot it as to whether they got it or not. What? Anthony Pope ran him out of bounds. One thing that was very impressive there was his patience. It is a first down. His patience then, instead of just racing to the outside, he waited for a few of his blockers to get there and it enabled him to get a few more yards necessary for a very important first down. Crucial play for Manatee and Joe Kinnan. Manatee has rushed for 933 yards during the playoffs. Slot to the near side this time as Sanders looks at first and ten. Give us the waiters. 
No chance. Big number 69, Van Yarm was in there to make the stop, along with a little bit of help from his friends, Ernie Parrish. Now, Ernie Parrish was all city, and he's also a major college prospect at Strat. We had the opportunity to meet the young man yesterday, an outstanding young man. He is probably the most outstanding player. We really got to pick one on this South, uh, Southridge team. Gain of one on the play. It'll be second down and nine. Fake to Waiters. They look outside. No chance. Stanley Collins was out there, and he was isolated on Anthony Ross temporarily, but Ross stayed with him step for step. Ross, by the way, get this one, had seven interceptions and four rough fumble recoveries in his last four games. Tracy Sanders' statistics on the season, impressive. Nearly 1,000 yards for the young man. He has rushed twice here on his long passes. I don't think that they've thrown long too many times in the season, and his timing is down just uh, a little bit. And it's quite an exciting game, all offense, and it's still 7-7. Waning seconds of the first quarter as the clock stops with 56 on it. Collins in the slot. Third down nine. Let's see what Sanders does. Whirly Bird tries to get it to the tight end. Not there. Almost intercepted by Day. And Manatee will have to boot it. And I would imagine that uh, Coach Joe Canan would go back and tell him, son, take a little more time when you're passing, you're rushing it because you're not giving your receiver time to get downfield. He's been way off target so far with his uh, passing. Frank Brunner was the intended receiver. He never had a chance at it. So Manatee goes back to boot it. And that means we will see Trey Walker, who averages 37.5 a kick. He'll be standing back at his own three-yard line. Southridge has Smith and Chappelle back deep to receive the punt. Good snap. No rush by Southridge. High kick spiraling, and they'll just let it drop. And it will roll dead on or about the 39-yard line. And down right there, 39-yard line of Southridge with 41 seconds to go on the first. Don Solinger on the phone upstairs. I'll tell you, you can't stir him with a stick in this stadium, Dick Stratton. There is not an empty seat to be found. And the weatherman has cooperated. We've had a lot of rain. We've had no rain prior to an hour of the football game. And I'm so happy because it gives both of these teams. And if you're wondering how they got here, just in Miami alone in this division of 4A, there are 27 teams. So you can imagine around a state how many there are. First and 10, Leon Brown gives to Hunter. And Hunter is stacked up. Big number 44, the linebacker for Manatee. Chad Choate, who, by the way, is the son of Principal Wesley C. Choate. Choate at 6'1", 185 pounds. The senior puts the stop, and it's actually a loss of two on the play, and that will be the last play of the first quarter. It has been an interesting first 12 minutes. A lot of offense, as we expected that it might be, and we're in for a high-scoring ball game. 7-7, our score from Tamiami Stadium. We'll be back with quarter number two right after this. Miami Stadium, Miami, Florida, tie score. Dave Reed along with Dick Stratton, the Florida High School Football Association Championship. Second down and 12, Southridge. Give us off to the big tailback, Reed. 
And Reed breaks it out to the 45 yard line. Gain of about six on the play. Reed has been impressive throughout the football game. Vincent Crawford on the stop for Manatee, but it'll all be for naught as Manatee will be called for motion in the backfield. It has been a penalty-free football game so far, Nick Stratton. Yes, it has, and it's very impressive on the part of the coaching. The precision of the line and the timing uh, has been, uh, there's been one offside, and uh, this is the second penalty, and it's been one of those unfortunate things. When you get in a pileup, sometimes you're going to grab a fellow's face mask uh, when you don't intend to, but that's impressive when you look at the the stakes here tonight I mean it's there's no tomorrow we're going to have a champion and you might explain to him what happens if it's a tie at the end of the game well let's touch on that a little bit later on it's an interesting kind of situation in high school football second down and 17 instead of third down and about eight passing situation Brown on the drop back to throw looks to the outside has Chappelle Chappelle is going to go all the way touchdown Southridge Chappelle has his seventh touchdown of the season. It's 13 to 7. Kim on to try the PAT. It's through the uprights and good. Curtis Chappelle with 4 4 speed in the 40 yard dash on a down and out pattern. It's 14 to 7 in the second quarter. Stay with us. We'll be right back. says he is faster with the football. Did you notice that move? You don't teach that. That is great skill. Outstanding play. Outstanding play. And on the ensuing kickoff, Manatee takes it back to their own 27-yard line. Byron Jenkins on the return for Bradenton Manatee. Chappelle. What can you say about the young man? You believe this is his first season of varsity football? 6'1", 155-pound junior had 17 catches coming into the ball game this evening. And he has Both coaches are making me a hero, my friend, about the saying I think they're going to get it wide open with a passing game, Dave. They did it in a hurry, a minute 21 on three plays. First down and 10, Manatee. Sanders now shifts his tight end, Brunner over. Fake to the first man, gift to the second. Southridge is pumped up. Frank Creighton had nowhere to go. There he is, the young fellow with the 4-4 speed. That's the first thing you got to have if you're going to be a great receiver. That's the first thing any division of football does. They put the clock on you and say, how fast are you in the 40? But the most important thing is how are your grades before you go to college? Ed Miserani on the stop for, uh, for Southridge. Official timeout on the play. And J.C. Williamson looks over to the far sidelines, apparently concerned about the official clock. Okay, now they get it squared away. Southridge, defensively, will play the 50. They play the 5-2, except in obvious passing situations. And they'll play it on this down. Across the front line, they are not very large. They give away, as we mentioned earlier, about 25 pounds a man to Manatee. It's interesting, Dave, that Mr. Brown, the quarterback, is four for four on the night, and they've all been big ones. No gain on the play as Sanders looks at second down 10. Fake to Creighton, has time. Now he's got a big hole up the middle. Sanders breaks it to the left side. He's still got running room. One more block and he's gone. And Sanders gets it down inside the 50 yard line, down to the 49 of Southridge. What a run. There is just a huge gaping hole that formed 
after he was run out of the pocket. Anthony Pope saved the touchdown, but there's a penalty flag. This may be an offensive penalty dip because as Sanders collided, let's see, unsportsmanlike conduct is going to be at Southridge. Well, let's take a look, and Dave. Perhaps you can uh, check out what happened. Well, you know, as, as Sanders hits him, well, let's, let's talk about the play first. Sanders rolls out on the sprint drop, has nobody to throw to. Now he's got about 20 yards ahead of him. Nobody ahead of him at all. He's got one blocker in front. And uh, this time he gets it inside the Southridge, into Southridge territory. And right there, the personal foul penalty. And it gives Manatee excellent field position, the 34-yard line of Southridge. I'm sorry, but I still did not see the... Uh the, the, the penalty call. I thought each were patting each other on the back in the sportsmanship capacity. First down and ten. Manatee. I formation as always. Sanders gives up the middle. Tracy Waiters carries about four Southridge defenders down to the 24-yard line. Martin Jackson on the stop. Joe Canan a little bit more pleased with the way things are going right now. Marvin Jackson, the All-City player, had 72 solo tackles, 28 assists Just short of the bird. coming on into the season. And Joe Canan, whose ball club came down yesterday, they boarded the bus and came down, got here in about four hours, got here about 2.30 this afternoon, wanted to practice on the field, and they wouldn't let them yesterday. So that, this is the first time they've even seen the field. Second down and one, game was nine. Waiters has the first down and a heck of a lot more. Down to the 12-yard line before Shades being tackled by Anthony Ross. Shades of Herschel Walker when he gets back into the secondary. It's a mismatch, isn't it? He's a big kid, six foot, 205 pounds. Anything in high school, about 190 or above, is very large. And they've got a 205-pound running back. Most linemen in high school are not but about 170, 175 pounds. Yeah, but with all of the weight work they do all year long, their upper body and their lower body is so strong now, there's no comparison with the so-called good old days. We'll talk about the weight program over at Southridge a little bit later on. Right now it's first down and 10 at about the 12-yard line for Manatee. Sanders gives to Creighton. Creighton runs over a tackler and gets it down to the eight yard line for a gain of about four. If you look at second down and six, the secondary for Southridge is making an awful lot of tackles. Daryl Day on the stop for that one. And there's what Southridge has done uh, rushing wise. Southridge allows only 84 yards a game average and Manatee averages 213. So there's a little bit of a mismatch going on there this evening. And so far Manatee's gotten the better of it. Second down and five. Ball marked at the seven-yard line. Collins comes split to the near side. Give us to Waiters, and Waiters is driven back. Ed Miserini, the outstanding defensive end, the most consistent player, says Don Solinger on the South Rift Ball Club, makes the stop. 5'10", 180-pound senior. They're going to stop these power backs. They're going to have to least slow up in the line of sprint. And that is uh, another key defensive play. So they back them up to about the nine-yard line. Loss of one on the play. So you call it third down and a long six. Obviously, they can get the first down without making the touchdown. And remember, Dave, this drive started way back at the 27. Sanders has a slot to the near side. Look for the rollout to the wide side of the field, which is coming towards you on your TV screen. There it is. Option play. Sanders cuts it up. And touchdown, Manatee. Great individual effort. Look at the individual effort by Sanders. He was hit by I don't know how many guys. There's one. There's two. There's three, four. Turns around, five guys, and he drags them into the end zone. Well, in one of the write-ups we read in the Miami papers, he said he was a threat with his arm and his legs, and he has proven the leg part so far. Andy Elton comes on to try the PAT to tie this football game up. Snap, spot, kick is up, blocked kick is blocked, and it was number one, Anthony Ross, who rushed in to block that kick. And that could be a big, big point the way this football game is going. 6.59 to go second quarter, 14-13 our score.
a sports network. And after Mitchell Benson, Scott Cortez, the game being heard on WNBN Radio 1490 Miami, and also being sent to WBRD in Bradenton. Welcome to the ISFI Sports Network. And there's a very happy young man on the sidelines, Tracy Sanders, who just scored the last touchdown, but his still, team still trails by one point. That's his 13th touchdown of the season rushing. Andy Elton will boot it away from Manatee. But it goes to the wide side of the field. Lee Smith takes it at his own 15-yard line. Has a hole and gets it back, and they'll have decent field position at the 30-yard line, and about nine guys bring him down. David, we've had long drives. That last one by Manatee, and the touchdown by the quarterback went seven plays for 73 yards, five minutes and six seconds, and uh, it's been some show. Well, it has been all offense. The only real mistake, the fumble by Harvey Reed that cost his team what could have been a touchdown as he fumbled it down close to the goal line. But certainly Southridge has not been hurt by that one as they leave in this football game, 14-13. Anthony Montgomery comes split to the near side of the field. Brown takes the read, roll out to the right side, and he'll be knocked out of bounds at the 35. Brown just had nobody to throw to as the zone defense by Manatee had everybody covered. Scott Schubert, the strong side linebacker, we call his number a lot tonight, on the stop. And so many skilled players and so many skilled positions. I can remember in those good old days, if you had three or four fine high school players, you could go out and beat everybody. But in 1983, you need speed, you need skilled players and skilled positions, and we're seeing excellence in all of those tonight. Don Solinger said they wanted to out-condition Manatee tonight. They, he said they are stronger in the third and the fourth quarter because they put so much emphasis on conditioning and weight training. Brown, pitch out. This is Nelson on second and five. Oh, what a hit. Nelson was leveled over on the far sideline. Number 42 for Manatee, Willie Tatum. Tatum had the game-saving interception against Lakeland back in the sectionals a couple of weeks back. He is shy of the first down, third down and two. And look how much Manatee outweighs Southridge. Yeah, in their regular season play, Manatee's been behind early seven to nothing, but they just routed most of their opponents. It's an interesting statistic that uh, Southridge was behind to North Miami, 17 to nothing with 18 minutes to play and beat them 45 to 25. So they're very explosive. Third down and one. This time we see the wing on the far side. Brown still has it, pitches out, Nelson, he'll not get there. Manatee Brad Crossan, the quarterback, had that one diagnosed, and he throws Nelson for the loss, and Southridge will have to boot it. I think they've made a little adjustment in their defense, and uh, they put the, their linebacker a little further back out to the left side, and you can see that's what's been killing them, and it worked very well, the adjustment. On third and one, they tried to get a little bit too fancy with it, Everybody expecting uh, up the middle. They Number tried to do too many things with one yard to go, and it cost them. So Johnny Walker, who averages 34 yards a kick, comes on to boot it away for Southridge. Low snap. Walker has trouble. No rush, however, and he does get the kickoff. And it will be taken by one of the up men. And down at the 45-yard Sanders, roll out. Got a man, but he got it. He was trying to hit his tight end Frank Brunner, and Brunner grabbed the ball and let it hit the ground. And a good uh, position by Mr. Alsobrook to call that. He was right on the spot. You know, it's very impressive about how outstanding this activity is playing for a championship in football, but both the schools, Manatee, and we were over at Southridge where they are champions in track, wrestling, baseball, and the women's sports are outstanding too. They've won championships in softball. They're very good in basketball and outstanding in track. And that's what it is all about in high school. Everybody participate. Third down 10 for Manatee. Sanders. Got his man Mitchell. And that'll be very close to a first down. Ronnie Mitchell run out of bounds by Daryl Day. But not before Mitchell gets his 13th catch of the season. And let's see. It'll depend on where they spot it as to whether it's a first or not. It's close enough for J.C. Williams to say bring those stakes in. Gene, i like to see what I just saw Coach Don Solinger. He patted the young man on the back and said great catch, nice going. Uh, that's 
the type of sportsmanship we need. There's a tremendous amount of respect on the field right now. Both of these teams realize the other one is an excellent football team. Both are very confident. First down, Manatee. Let's look at it again. Pretty good hands, pretty good move, pretty good knowing where the sideline is. Would you say it's a pro-type catch? I guess they always look at those fellas. He's been watching the Dolphins, hasn't he? <laughs> Simple down and out, and Day was playing a little bit too far off of it. Southridge does not want to get beat deep. Jerry Hughes, the defensive coordinator, made that abundantly clear to us yesterday. First down, 10. Sanders to Waiters. Waiters is tripped up as he crosses the 40 and gets down to the 38-yard line as Marvin Jackson again pulled him down from behind. Marvin Jackson was the team's defensive player of the year last year and is the odds-on favorite to get it again in 1983. Four-yard gain on the play. So you look at second down and, well, about a long five, let's call it. Mitchell to the wide side, Collins to the near side. Sanders on the long count, gives to Waiters. Waiters hits one man, breaks outside, has the first down, and gets inside the 20-yard line. Anthony Ross again on the stop, Dick Stratton, and we have seen one time and time again the defensive secondary of Southridge being called upon to make the stop. We talked about Waiters' discipline when he ran wide. Watch him this time. He's got natural moves, but he just doesn't go with the blazing speed. Power there. But now let's watch him pick his field and watch the move here. See that little wrinkle? That means an extra two or three. Brad Smith gets wide to the far side of the field on first down and 10 from the 18-yard line. Manatee driving. Sanders fakes to Waiters, pitches off Creighton. Creighton has Ross there. Ross knocks him out of bounds again with help from Day. But they are getting into the secondary and getting in there consistently. They get down inside the 10-yard line, close to the eight. Joe Canan on the telephone upstairs. His offense has been impressive throughout this ball game. Well, when you got Sanders, uh, the quarterback ability with his run, he could probably be a tailback, couldn't he? Look at those stats. Some impressive numbers. 37 points a ball game. They scored over 50 points twice and scored 61 once. And when you year. got Frank Creighton back there, Tracy Raiders, and that Sanders who can run, and he does the option so well, it's almost difficult to stop. It is a first down inside the 10-yard line at the nine. Waiters up the middle. Goodbye. Touchdown, Manatee. Look at it again, sheer power through the middle, had good blocking, but he does a little of it on his own. Again, they run to the right side. David off the center, Richard Starowski, the right guard at 250 pounds, just opens up a huge hole and allows Waiters to take it in. They will go for two on this one because they missed the last PAT. Let's see if they throw for it with all that running power. Look for the option play to the right side. That's exactly what it is. Waiters on the option will throw, turns to, throws it outside, incomplete. So with 2.56 to go, Manatee takes the lead, 19-14, by virtue of an impressive 77-yard drive. Southridge now is becoming evident. They don't have the weight, and they're being pushed out of the way. That young man right there having a super ball game, he's been consistent all year long. Gets his 17th touchdown of the season as Tracy Waiters, 205 pounds senior. So now Southridge has got to come up with something a little bit different, I would think. They've been stopped the last two times they had the football. Yeah, they're getting quicker. Seven plays, 56 yards in three minutes and 11 seconds. And virtually all of that on the ground. And that's exactly what you want to see if you're Joe Canan. Keep the football away from Southridge and their offense. Yeah, and Don Solinger says they're conditioned. They'll have to be, Southridge, that is, and we'll see if they can get something. They've got time here, the way they've been moving the ball, to take the lead themselves. Hasn't been a great game, Dave. We have not seen a whole lot of picture of Hawkins, the tight end for Southridge, and a lot of people would tell you he would be the man they would be trying to throw to because the Manatee defensive backs are small. This is Smith. 
and Lee Smith takes it up to the 30-yard line before being dragged down by Stanley Collins. So we'll see Leon Brown and company taking the field with 2.50 to go in the first half. Three minutes, 11 seconds on the scoring drive, 56 yards, seven plays, all by the run. And Manatee gets his third touchdown of the evening. So we got about two and a half minutes for Southridge to try and put something up on the board, more than enough time. Something different now. Reed lines up as a slot. Look for the pass on this one. That's exactly what it'll be. The sprint draw to the right side. That is Reed coming out of the slot. And Reed gets it down to the 35-yard line for a short game, but not before Todd Mooney, inside linebacker from Manatee, makes a grab. Mooney at six foot, 195 pounds, a senior, one of the leading tacklers on this defense, as you see the scoreboard. Jerry Hughes, the defensive coordinator of South Ridge, said they're just going to have to gang tackle waiters to try and keep him out of the end zone. They haven't been able to do that so far. Montgomery goes in motion on second down and five. Brown back to throw. Lots of time. Got a man, 45-yard line. That is Montgomery. And that is enough for Southridge first down. Only 25 seconds to call the plays in high school football, as in college. Nelson will come out of the ball game, and Harvey Reed will come back in. Minute 44 to go on a rolling clock. Don Sollinger looking for some kind of big play. Doesn't get him, decides to call timeout. He doesn't want the play to be run. Leon Brown looks at J.C. Williamson and says, we'll stop it right here. 134 to go, 19 to 14, Manatee out front of Southridge, a game that has gone pretty much according to plan. We thought that Manatee would jump out early on just simply because of the sheer size, and they have done so. But Don Sollinger says, as we alluded to earlier, that we're a lot better shape than most people give us credit for, and we feel like that we can compete with anybody in the third and the fourth quarters. So they're going to try and out quick Manatee. They have tried to run wide. They've had some success, but surprisingly, they've had as much or more success running the football inside on Manatee as they have running it outside. Of course, we mentioned earlier on these two teams did meet last year. Both teams were 9-2. and two. They met in the Kiwanis Holiday Bowl over in Bradenton. It was won by Southridge, 23-20. to 20. So these two teams are not strangers to each other. And certainly Don Sollinger and Joe Canan have a wealth of respect for each other as we talked to both of them this week. Don Sollinger says that Manatee is the best coached football team we've ever had or ever had to play against. And Joe Canan says the exact same thing, that Don Sollinger is one of the bright young coaches uh, in Miami. Sollinger, of course, in his seventh year, and it, it was fun talking to the young man yesterday and his coaching staff, a very young coaching staff, and he said they do everything together. They, the coaching staff plays racquetball. They compete in all kinds of other sports, and that lends itself to a competitiveness that they instill in their football club and it's proven productive here in 1983. 134 to go, first and 10. Southridge has the ball in their own 44-yard line. Slot to the near side. Brown gets the block, throws downfield, has a man, Chappelle, inside Manatee territory. Al Boyd Mays hit him in the back. Watch Chappelle at the bottom of your screen. It's just an in route. They sent the slot man down deep. Chappelle curled in under the zone. Caught it right there. Came back to the quarterback with a good receiver will. So now Southridge on the move. 120 on a rolling clock. In high school football, they will stop the clock to move the chains. Slot back to the near side this time. Brown takes inside. Looks downfield. Looking for Montgomery. That may be interference. No call. They ruled both of them were going for the ball. Mays was down there, along with Brad Crossan for Manatee on Montgomery. The double coverage. They hit each other, but no call. That is Brown's first incomplete pass of, this, of the evening. He's getting a lot of time on the rollout. Now make your own determination right there. This will say no interference. Both ball players were going for the ball. And again, in high school football, if you would not get the ball at that point. They would bring it back to the line of scrimmage, and it's a 15-yard penalty. So they would not have gotten it at that point. As you see it there, 64 ticks of the clock left to go. And Leon Brown calls timeout. 
Well, Southridge started this drive back at their own 30-yard line. They've moved it 23 yards in about four plays to get down into Manatee territory and hoping at least to put some sort of score on the scoreboard. A couple of years ago, they instituted the rule where the, the high school football coach can walk out onto the field and talk to his players, and virtually all of the high school coaches within the state of Florida take advantage of that. It's a much more intimate situation. You don't have to worry about uh, mistakes or miscommunications, and it's, it's good for the team because it's, there's something about seeing your coach in the huddle that's a comforting situation, as a lot of the players will tell you in and around the state. And it's a very, very good rule instituted by the Florida High School Activities Association, which is the sponsoring body, of course, for all the playoff action uh, in and around Florida. This game is going on this evening, but there are other high school championships going on in and around the state, most notably the 3A championship being played in Titusville this evening. Titusville and Palatka going at it. Titusville defeated the Panthers earlier on in the season, and uh, Jim McCool and company in Palaka looking for a little bit of revenge. But right now, we've got a Jim Dandy at Tamiami. 104 to go in the second half, or the first half, we should say. And a second down and 10 for Southridge. Montgomery comes in motion. Brown takes to the tailback. Looking long. Got a man open. That's Chappelle. Tatum with a super recovery. Chappelle had him beat by five yards. And Tatum gets back in time to knock it away. This is a straight post pattern. Chappelle runs the 4-4-40. They figured they had him beat speed-wise. They did, but the ball a little bit late in getting there. And Willie Tatum comes out of nowhere to back that one away and take away six. So now we have 57 seconds to go and a third down and 10 Southridge. Now you might think field goal position. Field goal kicker Sang Kim has had his problems this year. Well, let's see what Southridge does. Two receivers to the right side. Screen pass. And taking it and running it out of bounds to stop the clock is Roman Nelson. He may have gotten about two or three on the play, but it'll be a fourth down situation now for Southridge with 48 seconds to go. And at this point in high school football, if you kick it from this point, you really don't gain that much because chances are it's going to go to the end zone. You're only going to gain about 20 yards. So no doubt that they will go for this one. Don Solinger said, if we get in a situation where we're fourth and six or fourth and five and we're anywhere close to the middle of the field, we're going to go for it because we feel like we can make it. So let's see what Manatee does. They'll line it up with four men on the front. And they bring in the extra defensive back. Fourth down, seven. Brown takes up the middle, gets some pressure, middle screen. <laughs> Trying to get to the first down and getting it is Reed as he gets it down to the 32-yard line. And the clock will stop while they move the chains. I believe Southridge has one timeout remaining. J.C. Williamson signals first down. Harvey Reed has 17 catches. That's his 18th on the season for 141 yards and a touchdown. Solinger said when they were going to run the screen, they would try and run it to the middle as much as possible, and Leon Brown calls another timeout. John Solinger didn't want that one. Solinger did not want that timeout, and he goes out and talks to Leon Brown about it. Leon got a little bit confused on that one and uh, did not get the, coach from the, uh, the signal from Solinger and called the timeout with 36 seconds to go. This broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Sports Production Incorporated and the Florida High School Activities Association. Any transmission or rebroadcast of the contents or descriptions of this game, either in whole or in part, without the prior written consent, uh, consent we should say, of Sports Productions and the Florida High School Activities Association is strictly prohibited. Announcers for today's game are employed and compensated by Sports Productions, Inc., Dallas, Texas. And Joe Canan has got to be very concerned on the sidelines right now. They have consumed about a minute on the clock has Southridge. That is their final time out of the first half, so it's do or die time now. You look for the quick pass to the, to the sidelines in this kind of situation. They got them in, they can do it. Montgomery and Chappelle, of course. Chappelle comes down as his lone receiver, split to the near side of the field. Fake is to read, that didn't fool anybody. They go out in the corner, they got Chappelle. And that's a textbook down and out. Brown 
back to throw. Chappelle on a little easy down and out. Finds the seam in the zone. They're playing off of it. And Manatee's going to let Southridge have something sharp, but they're not going to let themselves get beat. They about got themselves beat on a couple of plays earlier where Chappelle had his man beat in the end zone. Now they reverse the set, and Chappelle will go to the far side of the field with Anthony Montgomery in the slot, and Nelson shifts to the slot back. Brown looking for Nelson. Had him, just overthrew it. And Nelson had about five yards ahead of him that he could have run if he'd been able to catch that football. 27 seconds to go. Southridge has done an excellent job in the last minute of working the clock and staying in this football game, trying to get one more touchdown before the half ends. It's been a jewel. Want to stay with us at halftime, by the way. We'll be talking with the executive secretary of the High School Football Association here in the state of Florida, Fred Rosell. Dick Stratton will be talking to him. We'll be seeing the bands of both teams playing, and we'll have a feature on a Florida Gator. Second down and 10. Give us the fake is to Nelson. Brown looking at a corner. Incomplete. Tatum had his hands on the football and I thought he might have had it for a minute. Montgomery, the intended receiver. So they will look at third down and 10. Dick Stratton has gone down to the field. We hope we can get an interview with one of the coaches before the halftime. It's been a good first half as we thought it would be. Both sound fundamental ball clubs and really a level above most of the high school teams in the state. Not that the other teams are bad by any means, but when you get it down to the last two teams of some three to 400 schools, you know you got to be good. Third down 10 with 19 seconds to go. Nelson in the slot. Brown in trouble, trying to set up the screen and nobody there. He was trying to get Rodney Hunter, and Hunter was jammed inside by Scott Schubert and could not get out to catch the football. So now it's fourth and 10, and they will try what will apparently be a field goal. Sang Kim comes in to try it. They will spot it at the 25-yard line, making this a 35-yard field goal. King, or Kim, we should say, on field goals this season is 3 out of 10, 30%. Good snap. Kim gets it off. It's high enough. It's straight. It is no good. Wide to the right side. But it was very, very close. He had the distance on it, just a little bit right to the pole. And with 10 seconds to go, Manatee will take over. So Southridge keeps the ball for clockwise about a minute 10. Real time wise about 10 minutes and they come up short handed. And that is a very good momentum uh, factor for Manatee. They'll be going into the locker room pumped up. Southridge is going to have to go in and regroup. And I'm sure Joe Canan at this point is just going to sit on this one where at the very least give it to waiters and maybe hope he can break it. But you won't see anything fancy here I don't believe. And as I say that, Sanders goes back to throw. Finds a hole up the middle. Now he's got room on the right side. If he can get by Day, he may have six. Penalty flag on the play. Day trips him up. Sanders falls down at the 41-yard line. No time on the clock, but hold it right here. As the half cannot end on a penalty. we got a clip on the offense. It cannot end on a defensive penalty, we should say. Let's see at, at what point the clip occurred. Clock says no time. J.C. Williamson down talking with Jackson of South Ridge, the team captain. And Jackson, I'm sure, would like to take that one back. And that's exactly what they will do. So they will mark it off halfway to the goal line. There you see, clip, blocking below the waist. And that's a very serious infraction in high school football. It's a 15-yard penalty. They will spot it on the 20-yard line. So one more play to go because the half can end on a penalty. And you may see Sanders just air this one out. He looked for Collins or possibly Ronnie Mitchell. And Southridge knows it. They've got Ross playing center field back at the 50-yard line. And Sanders will just dive it into the line. So that'll be the end of the first half. 19-14 our score. A game pretty much expected. Manatee out front by five. A game Southridge ball club giving up a lot of weight, but uh, making it up in quickness. It's been a good first half as we anticipated it would be. Second half, Don Solinger says it should be our ball game. We hope that we can be stronger in the third and fourth quarters and most of the ball clubs that we face, and he'll have to do it tonight. Dick Stratton has Don Solinger on the sidelines. Dick? 
Don Salter, it's everything you said it was, and you said your condition is going to win this football game. Do you still feel that way? I tell you what, they better be ready to play 24 minutes. We'll be back, I guarantee you. Did you go to the pass just because the clock was sort of forcing you to try to get that touchdown, or that's something you're going to do in the second half? We'll throw the ball some. We still want to run the ball, but we'll throw the ball. Yeah, we can throw. Just before you go in and chat with those young men, we know the domination of this Manatee running game. What can you do to stop it? Uh, we got to make a few adjustments. You know, they're really ripping off some yards, but we'll make those adjustments at half. We're going to, you know, do a couple of things with the uh, defensive line, you know, from a uh, head up position and, and try to shade them one way or another on a snap of the ball. We'll get it done. Thank you, Don. Okay. It's everything you said it was. All right, David. All right, thanks a lot, Dick Stratton. There's your score. 1914, we're at halftime at Tamiami Stadium. This is the Florida High School Football Association Championship, and we got a good one. Stay with us. Our halftime show coming up next. There you see the score, 19-14. Manatee out in front of the Southridge Spartans, a game that has gone pretty much according to plan, and everybody having a good time here at the football stadium tonight. A capacity crowd, as we mentioned earlier, and we also knew that uh, sooner or later we're going to crown a champion this evening, and we'll be doing that in about 24 minutes as the second half gets set to go. First, uh, first half stats, you can see statistically Southridge has dominated in terms of first downs. Dick Stratton, but yards rushing a big, big edge to Manatee. As expected, I think. Southridge, 184 or 48 yards passing, uh, overshadowing Manatee. No surprise there in the passing department. Total yards Southridge with an edge, actually, 233 totals. The penalties about even. Uh, the only one turnover was the fumble by uh, Harvey Reed back down on the end zone that cost his team a touchdown, what could have been a touchdown at least, but by and large, a pretty even football game. Manatee did throw. They were very off target with it, but you can tell they're a running team, but he has an arm, but uh, he might not have to use it if the running game is as uh, stringent as it's been so far. Don Sollinger is going to have to find a way to try and stop the Manatee running game. It's been awesome with Waiters and Frank Creighton. The real damage has been done by Waiters. He has kept Southridge honest. They cannot key on Creighton because you've got Waiters coming in with a dive play with the capacity to break it and break it long. The key, as you said, was the fumble when they were about to go in for a touchdown. I'm sure that uh, Coach Don would like nothing better than when they get the football to use a lot on the clock and then score so that Manatee doesn't get a chance to move down the field so rapidly. We have seen more balls in the air than we anticipated we would have. We thought particularly that Southridge would try and keep it on the ground and keep it on the ground consistently, particularly for, towards the end of the first half. We saw Southridge throw the ball on about nine straight plays, trying to get the ball close enough at least for a field goal or a possible touchdown at the time. But I think Don Sollinger's throwing the football more than he really would like right now. I got to throw in a plug for those bands, uh, the parents and the directors and the youngsters who work so diligently. You know, at the Gator Bowl, we use an all-star high school band, and they give up their entire holiday. Of course, they are seen at the Gator Bowl, and they receive scholarships. Boy, are they a part of the total picture of activities in Florida athletics. Back deep to receive for Manatee, number 22, Frank Creighton, and a booted away for the South Ridge Ball club from here in Miami will be saying, Kim, Southridge has kind of a funny way of lining up for a kickoff. They jam everybody up to the far side of the field. You take a look at it right there. Everybody close. They try and shade it to the left side of the field. It will be Creighton at the 10-yard line to the 15. And Creighton across the 20 and down to the 25-yard line. And so Manatee will take over. First possession of the second half. They lead 19-14. 54. There's the fellow that's done such a magnificent job since coming back to Bradenton, Florida, his hometown. He has played for uh, this high school, and he is an outstanding offensive man, and they've got a great thing going. Joe Canan. Southridge on the season held its opposition to 84 yards per game rushing. They're not having quite as much luck against Manatee this evening. You can throw the statistics really out the window tonight. 
because these are two top-notch high school football teams. Fake to Waiters. Pitch goes to Creighton on the right side. Creighton breaks it to the 25 and is gain tackled by about half a dozen Southridge Ball Club. We players. saw a pretty good adjustment there. They got to the quarterback. I imagine they told the fella, get to him, make him make a bad pitch, Ooh. and somebody stepped in his face, and it was almost disaster. Tony Marrero makes the stop on Creighton after a gain of two and a second down and eight. Manatee with the same basic offense as they started the football game. Sanders, Waiters, Creighton in the backfield. Collins, one ride, receiver Brad Smith in now to wide spot, replacing Ronnie Mitchell. Mitchell and Smith will alternate the plays. Give us off to Waiters. Oh, boy. I don't know how in the world he came out of that one. Waiters hit up inside and was hit by four. Southridge Ball Club play. <laughs> Spartans, we should say, and just bounce to the outside. And already here, David, in the early second half, we have one of those key third down situations. This is a must now for Southridge defensively. So many coaches will tell you the first offensive possession is so, so important, and there you see just how badly Southridge is outweighted up front. Third down five. Fake to Waiters. Sanders keeps it himself and gets the first down. Gets across the 35 down to the 37 yard line. And that's the one thing that Don Solinger and the Southridge Ball Club said they did not want to see happen was Tracy Sanders carrying the football. And that's one of the few times he's done that this evening. But the execution was so well done. It was like he gave it to Craters and took it away from him. Had he given it to Craters, he'd have had the first down too. Boy, they are dangerous. So first down as Smith comes to the near side, he will be your wide receiver, Stanley Collins in the slot. You see him at the bottom of your screen. Manatee's gonna run this thing until they absolutely have to throw. Sanders gives to Waiters. Waiters gets it up to the 40 yard line. Gain of about two on the play. Ariel Morales on the stop for Southridge, along with help from Gary Paris. One number that we have not called a whole lot tonight is Ernie Parrish from Southridge, the outstanding defensive tackle. He's been pretty well negated tonight. And he's got a lot of meat going up against him, however. He's he's playing right on Richard Staroweski from Anatee, who's 250 pounds. And when he's not playing against Staroweski, when they try to shift, he plays against Steve Peebles, who's about 220 himself. Second down, seven. Sanders with a soft pass to Cullings. Anthony Ross was within one step of giving Southridge the lead. That pass was overthrown, and if Ross had had one more step, he'd have been gone to the end zone. Nobody all, in all he had to have was the football, and he was gone. He's got the speed. He's the little fella that's already had a pretty good night. He blocked an extra point, but my goodness, let's let's see how close he was to bringing Southridge back into the lead. Again, again, let's call attention that this is the fourth time that they've overthrown the receivers. Ross comes up from his free safety position, actually got his hands on the football. The All-City selection couldn't hang on to it, however. And it's third down, seven Manatee. Sanders fakes the Creighton, getting pressure, tries to screen. And Steve Peebles, the left tackle, saw the football sail over his head and turned around in disbelief and said, wait a minute, I can't catch this thing. I'm a tackle. All right, just what Coach Solinger wanted now. He wanted to stop him inside the 50, and he's done it. But I can't understand him going to the forward pass with all that running. All right, so Curtis Chappelle and Anthony Montgomery will drop back deep to receive the kick. They'll stand on their own 20-yard line for Southridge. And remember, they both got speed, Dave. Trey Walker, who had a good boot last time, will come on to boot it for Manatee. Walker standing on his own 25-yard line. No rush by Southridge. Gorgeous kick. High spiral, and Montgomery will fair catch it right on the 20-yard line. 40-yard punt by Walker with 8.50 to go here in the third quarter. So Southridge comes on with their first offensive possession. Now, this is a big momentum drive for Southridge, and Don Solinger knows it. His defense has stopped Manatee. They have the football back. Not the greatest to field position, but they moved the ball 70-something yards on their first drive in the first half. Certainly they have the capability of doing it here, and they must do it here if they want the momentum to shift in their favor. Leon Brown, still your quarterback. Hunter and Harvey Reed in the backfield. Fake is to Reed. Brown to throw. He'll be sacked in the backfield. Brown. 
Back at the 11-yard line, Van Yard just nailed him from behind, and Brown had no indication he was there. It looked to me like they had a little different formation. They usually, they're usually the rollout type passes, Dave. It looked like he was almost trying to drop back, but Manatee put on the great rush, and that is the way to end any passing threat. Loss of nine on the play, and now you've got to be careful with the football. You're on your 11-yard line, and Manatee knows you've got to throw the football. Got to be super careful down here. You could get behind in a hurry. Brown gives off to Reed. Big hole up the middle. What a football game. That'll bring the home fans to life. Can you imagine that explosion? Harvey Reed all the way out to the 42-yard line. Look at the block by Andy Wilson and Ed Kasha with the right guard here. There he is, right in the middle of your screen. Here comes Reed. Big number 71, James Kloss with a clearing block. Victor Hawkins gets the block, the tight end, and Harvey Reed is off to the races. And Southridge is in business just over their own 40-yard line, first and 10. Three receivers to the far side. Brown, inside handoff, Nelson. And Nelson had about five or six more yards to get, but he slipped on the slippery turf. And he gets it out to the 45-yard line for a gain of about five. Scott Schubert brought him down. Well, they look back, they're back into their game plan now. I don't believe you'll be seeing Southridge put it up as long as they're going to run like that. They are conditioned. Both these teams are in tremendous condition because it's a very humid night in Miami. Extremely humid. Humidity's got to be up in the 90 percentile range with all the clouds we've had around. McLean goes in motion on second and five. Here comes Reed. He's got to get the turn. He gets it. And Reed is going to be knocked out of bounds. I think he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down, depending on where they spot it. Crossing runs him out of bounds for Manatee. So now Southridge will face a third down and where they spot it, it'll be about a yard shot. And this is a big down. We have not seen a whole lot out of Rodney Hunter tonight, the big fullback, who has been so consistent for Southridge. And this may be a golden opportunity. Harvey Reed, the district player of the year. We've seen a lot of him. McLean comes in motion, now lines up in the slot, third down one. Brown, Reed, first down, Southridge. Well, Leon Brown can really handle that football. There was a slight little delay there that left the, the hole open. He first just down, handled himself down. well, good handoff. And they're in Manatee territory. What a football contest. Schubert again makes the stop for Manatee. And the Southridge Spartans on the march. This drive started at their own 20-yard line. They were knocked back nine yards when Brown was sacked. They now find themselves first and 10, 49-yard line of Manatee and they've kept the football for about two and a half minutes. Pitch to Reed, over the right side. Reed breaks the tackle. And gets it down to the 40-yard line of some great individual Alfred. Alvoid Mays finally was the man that brought him down. Take a look at his style, getting low, carefully picking his path, getting everything he can out. Now, this is a great conditioned runner. He shakes that tackle. Look how low he is. And look, another yard or two by just forcefully going ahead. And also credit the block to Rodney Hunter, who was the front man blocking for Reed. He nailed the defensive end and allowed the hole to open up. Second down three. Power eye formation, slot back to the far side. And that's procedure. That'll cost them five, but they'll run the play anyway. Brown will just run it out of bounds, and does. But that will cost Southridge five as Paul Watkins ran Brown out of bounds. It has really been a, a mistake-free football game. We mentioned that in the first half, and the mistakes that have been made have not been of the major variety. Yeah, I know everybody across America is enjoying this. They're seeing the very best, but there's so much great talent in the state of Florida, and there are a few teams a touchdown behind both of these teams, or they could be here, too. It's, it's, it's a wonderful competitive uh, list of teams that are around this state. There are so many of them. Uh, one of the great 
You know, I was just thinking, the thought came to me, Dave Reed, about this Manatee team. They've been playing, I guess, 63 years over that way. They've been playing Sarasota that many years. But one of the greats who ever come out of that was a, an end named Richard Trapp that played at the University of Florida, played one year, only his last year at Manatee, went on to make All-American. Then, let me preface my remark by saying, today, he's an outstanding lawyer in Orlando and over in uh, Tampa. Second down and eight for Southridge. Ball spotted on the 46-yard line of Manatee. Brown, here's Hunter. Well, we thought it was about time we'd see that young man break loose, and sure enough, he does. Again, the great block thrown up front by Andy Wilson, the center, and Ed Koshua, the right guard. Yeah, and he was the one that was in motion while ago, and he looked over to almost apologize to his teammates. Out of the big blocking fullback, who scored three touchdowns this season. They call him Boo. Boo Hunter. First down, 10. 28-yard line. Brown. Option play. Pitch out. Great pitch to Reed. Reed gets it to the 20. Didn't gain that much, but Brown did a super job of drawing the defensive end in and then pitching it out to Harvey Reed. And while we probably will not see it, I must, the downfield blocking, everybody was down in his position. If he'd have got by that one man, there was somebody who could knock the secondary out of the way for him to have a long game. Nelson comes into the ball game with a play from Don Solinger. He calls all the plays from the sidelines. However, Leon Brown has the option of audibling and changing any of them. Joe Canan concerned right now, his Manatee ball club being pushed back. Brown looks at second down and four. McLean goes in motion to the far side. Pitch out to Nelson. Nelson tries to turn the corner and has finally run out of bounds. Schubert was the man in pursuit. And Willie Tatum finally brought him down on the far sidelines, and it's close to a Southridge first down. Would you say that's getting a little bit uh, on your own? <laughs> first down, Southridge. Rodney, Rodney Hunter, Harvey Reed, and Roman Nelson all run in the 4.4, 4.5, 40 range, and you can see it right there. They're also members of the 1,000-pound club, which we'll talk about in a little bit later on, the weight training program. McLean comes in motion to the near side. First down and 10. Brown fakes to the middle. Got his tight end, but he couldn't hang on to it. Victor Hawkins, the tight end who we had not heard from tonight. The all Dade County selection, that's his first attempt at a catch, could not hang on to it. John Solinger doing a super job of calling plays right here. They try, watch the top of your screen. They try and slip Hawkins out under the zone. They do get him out there, but the big hit by Alvoid Mays knocked the ball loose. He didn't have it tucked away. Well executed. He should have had that one, I think. Second down and 10. Ball marked at the 17-yard line. McLean comes to the near side again. Nelson off the left side. Won't get much. Mays was there. Also, Doug Andrews, the big right side in. I'll tell you what, Dave, if... Uh, if Southridge is trying to test it wide, they've got an up, up a lot good opportunity now where they are positioned on the field. They've got a wide open right side. Let's see if they pitch one out for this way. I think the option play is probably a, a good probability. Third down seven. Chappelle split to the near side. Brown fakes to Reed. He'll go down. Doug Andrews, the right side defensive end, was not blocked and came blowing in. Leon Brown had no chance. See him up at the top of your screen. He gets by Kloss and just levels Brown. Kloss had done a pretty good job on him up to that point. So now another long field goal attempt by Sang Kim. This one will be of 42 yards as they will spot it at the 32. Al Darling, the backup quarterback, will hold. Kim, this one won't make it. It'll be far short, about five or ten yards short of the goal, although it was on target. And Don Solinger again comes away empty-handed. He's got to be disappointed right now. It happened at the end of the first half, but we do have a flag on the field. And let's see what it's about. It's procedure, and it'll be against Southridge. So Miami, of course, will decline the penalty. 
or rather Manatee, we should say, will decline the penalty and take over at their own 20-yard line. With 3.08 to go, our score is 19-14. to 14. Manatee out front. We're coming back. the 1983 high school football season in the state of Florida will be over. And in 12 minutes, we'll have a new champion. I'm Dave Reed along with Dick Stratton, and that's our score. Miami Southridge 21 to 19 over Bradenton Manatee. And if you've just joined us, you have missed one whale of a good football game. Manatee looks at third down and one at their own 33-yard line. Big, big down. And you do it the easiest way. Sanders sneaks for it and gets the first. Neither one of these teams have won the uh, championship. Manatee has been in the playoff two years ago. They lost to Orlando uh, in a very close 14 to 13 game. And uh, Southridge has been in 1979 into the uh, semifinals and lost to Merritt Island, a team that went on to win it. So both would have a first time, and nobody's won it in Dade County for seven years. First down 10, Manatee. Waiters right up the middle. Gary Paris, the nose guard, got a leg and then got an ankle and then got the top of his foot and managed to hang on long enough to where four of the guys could come in and drag Tracy Waiters down. Gain of three on the play. Look at second down and seven. Tracy Waiters, 16 touchdowns on the season, 703 yards. And he's been the bread and butter man all season long for Bradenton. Second and seven. Sanders fakes the waiters, wants the pitch, keeps it himself, has the first down into Southridge territory and down to the 38-yard line. And again, Daryl Day was called upon to make the stop. Let's take a look at the replay now. He is almost tackled, but then breaks away because he's got power too. That's part of that weight program that gives him such good upper and, bot and lower body strength. And look at the balance. Another broken tackle. Is he a premier quarterback runner? And he's now, a, oh, they're right back in position. At 175 pounds, he's a very large high school football quarterback. Sanders gives off the tailback. Creighton, he may go. Run out of bounds, finally, on the corner. Anthony Ross saved the touchdown, but Manatee knocking on the door. Oh, I don't know where anybody in America would like to be other than watching this high school attraction. Let's this take a look at it again. Sheer power, good blocking. The offensive line is great. Look at the hole he's got to go through. But then he has the ability to cut back and the speed. Guerrero in pursuit could not get him. Ross knocks him out of bounds. First and goal, six yard line. 10-22 left to play in this football game. Manatee down by two, looking to take the lead. Brayton. Brayton gets it down to about the three before being shoved back. Darrell Henley for Southridge, 6'1", 170-pound junior, was a man that made the stop. Brayton gets three. Joe Canan wants six right now. Second down and two, call it. They say it got down inside the three-yard line. Hang on to your hats. We're going to have a good one. Boy, this one's over with. I'll tell you, this has been a super football game from opening kickoff. Just 
could not hang on to the football. He missed it from the snap, and Ed Miseratis falls on the football, but hold everything, hold everything. We've got a flag, and it's gonna go against Southridge, and Manatee will hang on to the football. Oh my. will retain possession. Let's see what J.C. Williamson says. He comes over now to talk to Don Solinger's coaching staff. Don can't believe it. Now he pulls his assistant away and talks with J.C. Williamson. We haven't received the call yet. But apparently Manatee's going to hang on to it. Jerry Hughes, the defensive coordinator, had to see with the glasses and the mustache in disbelief. And you can hear the reaction of this partisan hometown crowd. They don't like that one at all. We'll try and get clarification on the call. And I imagine Mr. Sanders is saying, thank you very much. They are saying, I believe, Dick Stratton, that Sanders, while he had possession of the football, his knee hit the ground. And therefore, it is still Manatee ball. When your knee hits the ground, you're down in high school football. That's the end of the play. And I think that's what they've ruled. And if that is the case, that's going to be a big, big call. Now, Stanley Collins has an equipment problem. Well, let's take a look and see if he's down, Dave. I, uh, if you called it, we'll see it. As you called it, let's take a look and see if his knee is down. That is the rule in high school football. Now make your own determination. He had it, had his hands on it. He's down right there. All right, they ruled he had possession of the football right there at the five-yard line, and that's a tough call. I'd like to see that one again. Sanders, Sanders, they say had possession of it. The last man to touch the football has the possession. That is a rule in high school football. Nevertheless, it's third down five, Manatee. Here goes Sanders. He won't get there. He gets it down to the one inch line. And this is the only thing this football game has not had yet is a goal line stand. And we've got a chance for one with fourth and one right here. All right, now put yourself in Joe Canan's position. Do you kick a field goal right here? Bear in mind, field goals in high school football are not automatic. Your chances of making one are drastically reduced. In a high school football game, Joe Canan knows that. He's going to go for it. He figures if he doesn't make it, Southridge is down here deep in their own territory. And there's still plenty of time. 8.23 to go with the power runners he's got. Tracy Waiters up the middle. Let's see. Collins split to the wide side. Sanders fakes to Waiters. Turns it inside. Touchdown, Bradenton. <laughs> It's a pretty good call, Dave. Don't hand it off. They've had a little trouble down there handling the football. He's got it, and he's an excellent runner. And now he finds enough to get through for the touchdown. He's had a little trouble in a couple plays down there handing it off. There are wet conditions down there because of the afternoon rain. It was a good call. And Waiters had just enough of a block on the linebacker Marvin Jackson to spring Sanders free for the touchdown. And now Manatee will go for two. Out front, 25-21. And Don Solinger wants timeout. He won't get it. Pitch goes to Creighton. He won't get there. Creighton will not get there. And so our score will remain 25-21. Manatee, but hold everything. There's a flag in the end zone. And it will go against Miami Southridge. So Manatee will have another chance at it. Third down and one will face Manatee. Joe Canan calls upstairs to see if anybody else has some ideas. That's a very short third down situation, but both these teams during the regular season have gone in situations in fourth down, but I don't think they do it there. They may not get this one off, however, as the waiting seconds tick away in quarter number three, they won't. So Southridge, after trailing at halftime, comes back in the third quarter to take the lead after the turnover. And our score is Southridge 21, 
Manatee 19. We have 12 minutes of football left to go in this one for the Florida Football Championship. We'll be back. minutes the 1983 high school football season in the state of Florida will be over and in 12 minutes we'll have a new champion I'm Dave Reed along with Dick Stratton and that's our score Miami Southridge 21 to 19 over Bradenton Manatee and if you've just joined us you have missed one whale of a good football game Manatee looks at third down and one at their own 33 yard line big big down and you do it the easiest way Sanders sneaks for it and gets the first neither one of these teams have won the uh, championship Manatee has been in the playoff two years ago. They lost to Orlando uh, in a very close 14 to 13 game. And uh, Southridge has been in 1979 into the uh, semifinals and lost to Merritt Island, a team that went on to win it. So both would have a first time, and nobody's won it in Dade County for seven years. First down 10, Manatee. Waiters right up the middle. Gary Paris, the nose guard, got a leg and then got an ankle and then got the top of his foot and managed to hang on long enough to where four of the guys could come in and drag Tracy Waiters down. Gain of three on the play. Look at second down and seven. Tracy Waiters, 16 touchdowns on the season, 703 yards. And he's been the bread and butter man all season long for Bradenton. Second and seven. Sanders takes the waiters, wants the pitch, keeps it himself, has the first down into Southridge territory and down to the 38-yard line. And again, Daryl Day was called upon to make the stop. Let's take a look at the replay now. He is almost tackled, but then breaks away because he's got power too. That's part of that weight program that gives him such good upper and, bot and lower body strength. And look at the balance. Another broken tackle. Is he a premier quarterback runner? And he's now, oh, they're right back in position. At 175 pounds, he's a very large high school football quarterback. Sanders gives off the tailback. Creighton, he may go. Run out of bounds, finally, on the corner. Anthony Ross saved the touchdown, but Manatee knocking on the door. Oh, I don't know where anybody in America would like to be other than watching this high school attraction. Let's this take a look at it again. Sheer power, good blocking. The offensive line is great. Look at the hole he's got to go through. But then he has the ability to cut back and the speed. Guerrero in pursuit could not get him. Ross knocks him out of bounds. First and goal, six yard line. 10-22 left to play in this football game. Manatee down by two, looking to take the lead. Brayton, Brayton gets it down to about the three before being shoved back. Darrell Henley for Southridge, 6'1", 170-pound junior, was a man that made the stop. Brayton gets three. Joe Canan wants six right now. Second down and two, call it. They say it got down inside the three-yard line. Hang on to your hats. We're going to have a good one. Boy, this one's over with. I'll tell you, this has been a super football game from opening kickoff.
just could not hang on to the football. He missed it from the snap, and Ed Miserini falls on the football, but hold everything, hold everything. We've got a flag, and it's gonna go against Southridge, and Manatee will hang on to the football. Oh my. will retain possession. Let's see what J.C. Williamson says. He comes over now to talk to Don Solinger's coaching staff. Don can't believe it. Now he pulls his assistant away and talks with J.C. Williamson. We haven't received the call yet. But apparently Manatee's going to hang on to it. Jerry Hughes, the defensive coordinator, had to see with the glasses and the mustache in disbelief. And you can hear the reaction of this partisan hometown crowd. They don't like that one at all. We'll try and get clarification on the call. And I imagine Mr. Sanders is saying, thank you very much. They are saying, I believe, Dick Stratton, that Sanders, while he had possession of the football, his knee hit the ground. And therefore, it is still Manatee ball. When your knee hits the ground, you're down in high school football. That's the end of the play. And I think that's what they've ruled. And if that is the case, that's going to be a big, big call. Now, Stanley Collins has an equipment problem. Now let's take a look and see if he's down, Dave. I, uh, if you call it, we'll see it. As you call it, let's take a look and see if his knee is down. That is the rule in high school football. Now make your own determination. He had it, had his hands on it. He's down right there. All right, they ruled he had possession of the football right there at the five-yard line, and that's a tough call. I'd like to see that one again. Sanders. Sanders, they say, had possession of it. The last man to touch the football has the possession. That is a rule in high school football. Nevertheless, it's third down five, Manatee. Here goes Sanders. He won't get there. He gets it down to the one-inch line. And this is the only thing this football game has not had yet is a goal line stand, and we've got a chance for one with fourth and one right here. All right, now put yourself in Joe Canan's position. Do you kick a field goal right here? Bear in mind, field goals in high school football are not automatic. Your chances of making one are drastically reduced. In a high school football game, Joe Canan knows that. He's going to go for it. He figures if he doesn't make it, Southridge is down here deep in their own territory. And there's still plenty of time, 8.23 to go. With the power runners he's got. Gracie Waiters up the middle. Let's see. Collins split to the wide side. Sanders fakes to Waiters. Turns it inside. Touchdown, Bradenton. <laughs> It's a pretty good call, Dave. Don't hand it off. They've had a little trouble down there handling the football. He's got it, and he's an excellent runner. And now he finds enough to get through for the touchdown. He's had a little trouble in a couple plays down there handing it off. There are wet conditions down there because of the afternoon rain. It was a good call. And Waiters had just enough of a block on the linebacker, Marvin Jackson, to spring Sanders free for the touchdown. And now Manatee will go for two. Out front, 25-21. And Don Sollinger wants timeout. He won't get it. Pitch goes to Creighton. He won't get there. Creighton will not get there. And so our score will remain 25-21. Manatee, but hold everything. There's a flag in the end zone. And it will go against Miami Southridge. So Manatee will have another chance at it. If they get the two, they're ahead 27-21, and Manatee, or Southridge, we should say, would have to get some sort of conversion after a touchdown, should they score, to get the win. So now they will move it to the two-yard line. As we wait to see what's going to happen, Tracy Sanders in tonight's ball game joins the 100-yard club. He's 11 carries for 100 yards. Don Sollinger was trying to call timeout before that play because he realized he had 12 men on the field. The official spotted it. And so Manatee will have another shot. 
This time it'll be marked at about the one and a half yard line. Here goes Creighton. He gets it. So on a wild turn of events with 8.08 to go, Manatee takes the lead. Our score, Manatee 26, Southridge 21. Just a uh, power move this time. Now watch the fake to Waiters. This is the touchdown. Now watch Waiters get the block right there. Just moves the man out of the way just enough to allow Tracy Sanders to go in for six. Our score 27-21 with 8.08 to go in the fourth quarter. Andy Elton will boot it away. Smith and Chappelle are deep for Southridge. This will be Lee Smith. He's got a hold. Right side. Collins in pursuit. personal foul on the play it'll be on Stanley Collins and they will add 15 more to that one tackled him out of bounds Al Boyd Mays made the stop but look at the blocking Nick Stratton he look gets away. the blocking but then he has the speed to go outside the blocking was great now he's got one man to beat and 85 is going to be the man to catch him and, I, and he wrestles him out of bounds and puts a little extra to him and that will give him an added uh, yardage and what else could we expect in a championship game, Dave Reed? I'll tell you, it has been something. Collins with a personal foul, Alvoid Mays with a stop. And now Southridge once again knocks at the door, the 25-yard line of Bradens and Manatee. Oh, boy. Here comes McLean in motion again. Brown, Reed, no dice. Big number 70. All 220 pounds of Paul Watkins put a stop to that one. Well, there's the quarterback that uh, they may give it, get the vote so far as a game's outstanding player, but there's been a lot of them. He has just been super tonight, running the offense. He's rushed well. He's passed well. He's called good plays. He's audible when he's had to, and he's led his team to a six-point lead. But that lead is right now very tenuous as Southridge looks at second and ten. This game has turned into a game of turnovers, Dick Stratton. Yes, and I think that particular bundle was man-made by the defense. Harvey Reed's second bundle of the evening. Watch Watkins, see if you get a hand in there. He's hit by three guys, and it is Watkins, I believe, that pulls the football out. And recovered, I believe, by Watkins himself. Manatee Magic, Magic come on, Hogs. Now it's up to the Southridge defense to buckle down. And you can bet Joe Canaz is not going to try anything fancy. There's Waiters. He gets a yard. Ernie Parrish brings him down from behind. He, he, is, he is the complete football player. He proved that to me when he threw that block down, and I've watched him, and he's a, he's a, a, a pretty good blocker. So far, Southridge, except for one occasion, has been unable to stop Manatee's offense. Manatee's offense, the times they have been stopped, have stopped themselves via fumbles. We've got another 100 yarder. Reed for Southridge in 15 carries is 108 yards. Sanders wants to throw. That's a surprise. He gets it out. He's down right there. That will actually be a loss of a yard or so, I believe. That's the wide receiver, Ronnie Mitchell. Now you've got a long third down situation. You lead by six points. You've got 5.57 left to go. Boy, is this a big third down play. This is the biggest one in the ball game. And now Joe Canan is going to have to dig deep and 
come up with some sort of play that'll get Southridge off guard. Let's remember they have not been successful in their passing attack. Let's see if they go at with it again. They may go with the option to the wide side. They've got a lot of room. No, they'll throw. Sanders back. Going to the sideline. Got Mitchell. And that's enough for a first down. And down and out is nothing but a pure timing pattern. And it was executed to perfection by Sanders and Mitchell. And that is a big, big first down. Ronnie Mitchell has been relatively quiet tonight. He had 12 catches for 250 yards and three touchdowns during the regular season. And the folks on the Bradenton side are getting a little rowdy. Collins in the slot. Smith to the wide side of the field. First down 10, 42 yard line. Manatee, this is Waiters. Great tackle. Number 17. And of course that would be Tony Marrero. If he not brought Waiters down, that was going for at least 15. Very rare to see somebody one-on-one -on -one bring him down like that. Brought him down from the ankles. That's the only way to bring that young man down. Joe Canan got to be breathing a little bit easier right now, but he's still got five minutes to kill off this clock. And so far, each team has shown the ability to turn the ball over. The last thing Joe Canan wants, I'm sure. Wide receivers to either side this time. Second down eight. Pitch out, almost the turnover. Creighton drops it, and I believe he got it back. And you should have heard the gasp on the other side of the field. We heard it all the way over here. That's great. The bad pitch, he couldn't get the hand on it. Pitch behind him. Creighton gets the left hand on it and has to go back. And that's a loss of two on the play. It'll be third down, 14. There wasn't much contact with the defense coming in there, but he was in there and forced him to throw it a little bit wide. They've been doing a good job on Sanders in that department. Big play here. Is this a third down important one? You bet. Collins and Smith, the wide receivers to the far side. Third down, 14. Four down linemen for Southridge, the extra defensive back in. Sanders back to throw, looking for the down and out. Does he have him? Yes. No. No, it is incomplete. Brad Smith on the far sidelines. I thought he had it. He was open as Southridge was playing off of the man. But Smith couldn't hang on to it. It sets the stage for what could be a dramatic touchdown championship winning drive by Southridge with 358 no to go. It. The people around the country have been watching this one for the state of Florida are seeing a real thriller. Can you imagine? 358 to go. The home team, Southridge, undefeated in 13 games, is playing Manatee undefeated in 13. And now Southridge is going to get a chance as the defense is held to try to go what could be a winning touchdown. Sanders has not been successful throwing the football tonight. Elton back to boot. High kick. And Don Solinger told his players to just don't touch it, and it's going to cost them. In high school football, you'll see that a lot, especially in crucial situations. You don't want to try and handle the football deep in your own territory. They didn't. It cost them 346 to go. And Southridge trying to pull this one out. We'll be back. And that tells it all. 27-21, Manatee out front, Southridge with a ball on their own 10-yard line. They've got 90 yards to go in three minutes and 46 seconds in which to do it. Don Solinger comes out of the huddle and trots to the sidelines. And Manatee is going to give Southridge all they want underneath. Defensive backs playing about 15 yards off the line. Brown back to throw, finds Chappelle, try to isolate him on a cornerback and hope that he can break it. He catches it but is unable to get by as big number 42, Willie Tatum, brought him down. They'll go to him. You know, even if it's a little short pass like that, he's so fast. If he gets past the secondary there, why, he could go forever. 
gain of six on the play. Second down, four. Clock continues to run. Brown gives off inside. That's Hunter. Trying to get the first down, hoping to catch Manatee in a wide set to hope to break it through. Unsuccessful. And it will be a third down. No, it will be first down. He did get the four. Three minutes exactly to go here. And the clock runs as they move the chains. Well, I can't say enough about the football game, everybody involved in it. People that are watching it around the country have got to say, isn't that something to watch? And I bet you they stayed right till the very end. It has been over. super. Again, they give off to Reed. That consumes time and doesn't get you a lot of yardage. 235 to go on the rolling clock. Nelson comes into the ball game for Southridge. He'll carry the play and Reed will come out. Nobody has left this stadium. Both Don Solinger, he's capable of being the champion, as is Joe Canan. Montgomery goes to the wide side. Pitch out. Here comes Nelson. He's got the move. Nelson turns the corner. He needs to get out of bounds. He does not. They tackle him inbounds. Two minutes to go. Willie Tatum makes the stop. They do stop the clock while they move the chains, however. Now Reed will come back into the ball game along with Tony McLean. Montgomery will come out with Nelson. You know, in the closing moments of the first half, they put on a good passing attack, and they're out where they've got some room now. First, oh, what a thriller. First down, 37-yard line, minute 50. Brown back to throw, looking for Chappelle. He's got his man beat if the ball can get there. He's got it. This time they don't usually do that. Usually they're the roller. Look how much he's beat his man. He just flat out ran Willie Tatum, and Tatum, I want to. Tatum did a good job of tackling him inbound. This ball game has had everything you could possibly ask for. It's a first down and 10, 16 yard line of Manatee. We got a minute 24 to go. Here goes Montgomery in motion. Brown to Nelson. And you see the tackle. He's nailed by Jackson in the backfield. Chappelle has been absolutely incredible tonight. And also credit Leon Brown with getting the ball to him. One minute to go. One minute to go, and Southridge does have timeouts available to them. Boy, this is high school football at its best. Brown. Here he goes to Reed. If he can turn the corner, he cuts it up. Reed gets it down to the 10-yard line. That is shy of the first down. Clock continues to run with 40 seconds, and Don Sollinger wants timeout. That's his bread and butter play, Dave. He to the wide side. 27-21 score. 40 seconds to go. That's and his bread and butter. That's the that's the recess play. Everybody go out and block and knock somebody down, and it works. I'll tell you, whoever wins here is going to be the champion. Whoever is the loser is still a champion. You bet they are. If you've never seen a high school football game or if you haven't seen one in recent years, you've got to be looking forward to next season. This has been some kind of football game by two outstanding teams with outstanding coaches and outstanding programs. And we'd like to say a personal thank you to those people who think enough of high school athletics to sponsor these telecasts. Amen. And what a job this crew has done. We've been here just a couple of days, but it's just been a great show. It really has. And now it's gut check time. A couple of young ladies on the sidelines just beside themselves right now. That's the cheerleading squad. And they're just saying, hey, <laughs> we are this close. Let's become champions. 40 seconds to go. Brown wants to throw. Looks to the end zone. Incomplete. Incomplete and great coverage by Manatee. No, it's incomplete. Let's take a look at it. Willie Wilson thought he had it. They were trying to hit the tight end. 
It's a good throw, but it's uh, he did the only thing he could do because Victor Hawkins was double covered. I could tell that clock. official is right on the spot. He's at the angle. He could tell if it hit the ground. Okay, Dick Stratton, it is fourth down. Fourth down and six. And Don Sanja wants to call timeout and talk about this one. Well, the whole season comes down to this one play. You fought all season long. You played 13 games. Nobody has beaten you. You've come close on occasion, and now it comes down to one play. Fourth down and six. The Joe Canaz trying to give us that facial expression that he's calm, but he's not. No chance. Leon Brown, all everything in this area. And now the biggest play of his career. 247 yards passing. Just an outstanding. You know, if you've got to pick a player as an outstanding player, I don't believe you could do it. You got Brown, you got Chappelle, Reed has rushed for over 100 yards, Creighton has rushed for over 100 yards. And, and Curtis Chappelle is just back into the ball game, number 35. He has been the key man. He has the speed. If they get a chance, I'm sure they're going to try to go to him, unless they can just use him as a decoy, because they're now tight enough where his speed will not have that much factor to, to the play development. All right, here it is, the entire 1983 season. Fourth down six, and the play will tell it all. could not get out of his backfield, sacked in the backfield, and now Manatee can run out the clock. And barring a turnover, they will be the 1983 Florida 4A champion. But they had to play a heck of a ball game to do it. Clock runs three, two, one. They don't have to run it. Manatee wins it. There is a penalty marker on the field with one second to go. They did not get the playoff in time, so they will have to run one more play, but it will all be for a moot point as the Manatee fans come out on the field. They'll have to walk back and get in their seats. As you see it there, one more play to go, and the Southridge players on the sideline utterly dejected. But I tell you, they have nothing at all to be ashamed about. This has been a five, as fine a high school football game as, as this announcer at least has ever seen. A marvelous way to end the 1983 high school football season. Joe Canan, congratulations to him and his staff, his outstanding players. And they really had to play a football game against the determined Southridge team tonight to come off with it. That'll do it. And Ray to Manatee is the 1983 Florida 4A high school football champion. And it has been some ball game and the epitome of dejection on the near sidelines. 13 games and you come up about six points short. And very quiet on the near sidelines, pure ecstasy on the far sidelines. Congratulations to Bradens and Manatee. Dick Stratton has gone down to the field somewhere in that mass of humanity is Coach Joe Canan. And we hope to get him when we return to Tamiami Stadium. Stay with us.